I'm Seth Greenberg, and I'm going to give you the perfect bracket. Rip up all the other ones. Here are all the answers to your test. Let's go to the top of the bracket right here. All right, Alabama, the most talented team in college basketball. This is Maryland, West Virginia team. This is a West Virginia team that gets to the free throw line, shoots the three. A really good offensive team for Bobby Huggins. I really like this West Virginia team. San Diego State, Charleston. Charleston is kind of like people are talking about Charleston because of the pace of their play. But San Diego State is physical. They get to the offensive glass, and they are an elite defensive rebounding team. And then Virginia Furman. Furman, an elite offensive team, but the backcourt defense of Virginia advances them. As we move on in the bracket here. You've got Creighton and NC State. NC State, obviously, with a dynamic backcourt, all right, can disrupt you defensively, shoot the three. But Creighton, remember preseason now, people talk about Creighton potentially being the number one team in the country. Creighton healthy with Kalkbrenner, they advance. Baylor, Santa Barbara. I'm a little worried about Baylor in terms of their defense, but those three perimeter guys are as good as any in the country. Flagler, obviously, has the experience of Final Four Championship. Missouri, Utah State, this will be the most enjoyable game to watch in the NCAA tournament. Two elite offensive teams, two teams that get 35% of their points from the three-point shot. Utah State, Missouri, but I like Missouri just a little bit because of Kobe Brown. He plays the five, and he is a brutal, brutal matchup. And then Arizona, Princeton. Those two big guys play high-low basketball. The guards have got to be consistent if they're going to continue to move on, but I like this Arizona team. As we move down the bracket here, we're looking at Purdue and Fairleigh Dickinson. By the way, Fairleigh Dickinson is known as Harvard on the Hackensack. They have very famous alums there. I won't tell you who, but Purdue has Zach Eady. He's better than Seth Greenberg, so I'll advance them. Memphis, Florida Atlantic. It's the Memphis defense, Kendrick Davis and DeAndre Williams. Just too much Florida Atlantic. What a season they have had. Duke R. Roberts, Max A. Smith, he is a problem. Connor Vandover, he is a problem. But Duke, they got 14 feet of problem in their front court and an outstanding perimeter defense. The Blue Devils, the ACC Tournament Champions advance. And then I'll take Tennessee. Tennessee over Louisiana. Even though they don't have Zakai Ziegler, they still have an elite defense. They'll struggle scoring at times, but those bigs will dominate that game. And then we'll go to the bottom of the East here. Interesting game. This is what I call the conspiracy game. Why do they call it a conspiracy game? Because what do you have? You've got Bryce Hopkins. He played at Kentucky a year ago, transferred to Providence. He's had a monster, monster year. But Oscar Sheboy, by the way, he was the returning player of the year. He's pretty good. If you, if, you, if you know anything about basketball, Oscar can rebound. I think Oscar rebounds the ball against a very good rebounding team in Providence. Kansas State, Montana State, maybe one of the best stories in college basketball. Keontae Johnson, all right, coming back and playing after, obviously, that tragedy at Florida where he had the heart ailment. Uh, Marquise Noel is a elite, explosive point guard. I can have them moving forward. Michigan State, USC. USC is a really good defensive team, but Michigan State's backcourt is a problem. You're talking about Tyson Walker gets in lane, a great closer. A.J. Hogard, big and physical, and Joey Hauser knocks down jumpers. I've got Michigan State advancing. Marquette and Vermont. I'll tell you what, Coach Becker's done an amazing job in Vermont. It is Tom Brennan Court, but Coach Becker, he might have an arena named after him. But this Marquette team and Chaka Smart, Shaka Smart has done not a good job, but an amazing job. And we'll talk about him later. But Tyler Kolick is the best passer in college basketball. Let's go over to the Midwest right now. When you look at the Big West, Houston, Northern Kentucky, I like this Houston team. But I have a little bit of concern, i got to be honest with you. No Marcus Sasser, how good can they be? He is an elite guard. He reminds me a little bit of Davion Mitchell when he led them, Baylor, to a national championship. Iowa and Auburn, opposites attract. Iowa can score. Auburn can defend, don't score so well. You know what? I want to see some offensive basketball. Iowa, obviously Chris Murray's had a monster year. Probably his next stop is in the NBA. Miami Drake, this is going to be the one that's going to cost the people some money. Not that I know anything about that. But Miami, if Norchad O'Meara does not play, this is a different Miami team. I think they got enough to beat Drake or Drake. If you want to take a swing, I would take it on Drake. Tucker DeVries. He's got Doug McDermott light. His dad's his coach, 6'7", scores it. Experienced team, uh, Ramon Penn is the point guard, but I still have Miami advancing in this game. And I've got, in a very close game, in a very close game, I've got Indiana, Trace Jackson Davis advancing. The problem is the next game, because Indiana, the last 10 games, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Can they validate their wins? That's the big question. We go to the bottom of the Midwest round. 
I had a Pittsburgh advancing, and it's not the play on, playing game. It's the first game. But you know what? I'm going to go with a little upset right here. I've got Pitt over Iowa State. You say, how can that be possible? Iowa State is an elite defensive team. They keep you on one side of the floor. Here's the problem. This is a Pitt team as old as any team in college basketball with terrific guards. Jamarius Burton, big physical guards. Blake Kinson can knock down jumpers. I like this Pitt team in the upset. I like Xavier, even though they don't have Zach Fremantle. Xavier has Kobe Jones, who's a, who's a matchup problem, as is Jack Nungy. And here's another little bit of an upset, potentially. I like Penn State. Why do I like Penn State? Well, Texas A&M does a majority of their scoring by getting to the offensive glass and turning you over. Penn State, secret. They don't turn it over. They don't give up second shots. You know what they do? They make a lot of threes. And Jalen Pickett is a matchup problem. I've got Penn State advancing. And then Texas Colgate. This Texas team just coming off a Big 12 Conference Championship. They are playing at a high level. Serge Barry Rice, one of the best shot fakes in college basketball. We go to the West. Kansas Howard. Here's another situation. I got Kansas winning this game, but Kevin McCullough, he's got to come back if they're going to make that deep run that people expect. Arkansas, Illinois, the 8-9 game, always a difficult matchup. Arkansas, they got Nick Smith back. They're not playing as well with Nick Smith back. But Anthony Black, Nick Smith, Devo Davis, that's a, that's a problem in terms of the perimeter. What they got to do is they got to still stay committed defensively, got to make some shots and share the basketball, which is really so important. St. Mary's VCU, you know, there's a famous 12 everyone's talking about. That's a guy named Rogers. There's another famous 12, and that's VCU. They've been to the Final Four. VCU, you want to help set? Here's what you have to do. Impose your identity on the game. VCU, because they extend their defense, they slow down St. Mary's, limit their exposure in the half court. I got it. VCU with the upset. And then the UConn, I Iona. This is not an audition for Rick Pitino to coach in the Big East. All right, he's still coaching at Iona. But this is a UConn team with two legitimate bigs. They got to get good point guard play. But this is a, a, a UConn team, I think, that will advance and make a deep run, a little foreshadowing right there. And then in the West, the bottom of the West, TCU, Arizona State. Arizona State's an elite defensive team. They play at warp speed. But TCU with Mikey Miles is a different basketball team. Average about 19 points a game in transition. They turn you over. I got TCU advancing in this game in a very close game. Walk, Walter Ellis plays for Grand Canyon. He's our favorite player at college game day. But Gonzaga, who's improving defensively, advances in this game. This is a terrific game right here. Northwestern, Boise State. I'm a big boo-booey Chase Odige guy. I just think both of those guys coming back when others were leaving. Ryan Young leaves. Uh, Pete Nance leaves. These guys stick around. They get to the NCAA tournament. I got Northwestern winning that game. And then UCLA. And UCLA is a little bit of a conundrum for me because UCLA, they, Jalen Clark's out for the season. Uh, Dan Bona did not play in the Pac-12 championship game. A dem bonus got to be healthy for them to move on in this tournament. So there's the opening round. Let's go over to the south now and look at the second round. Alabama, West Virginia. Now, teams that have bothered Alabama have been physical, tough teams that get into you, knock down cutters. That's what West Virginia is. Teams that get to the line. West Virginia almost leads the country in free, throws, uh, free throw rate. But Alabama is the most talented team in college basketball, led by the best player, NBA prospect in college basketball, Brandon Miller. San Diego State, Virginia, this will be an absolute rock fight. First to 55 wins. I think Virginia is used to playing games that are close. I think Virginia, again, in their backcourt. The backcourt is the key. Armand Franklin makes enough shots. Reese Beekman's disruptive enough defensively. They advance. Creighton-Baylor. I think the Creighton defense against the Baylor offense. Creighton, if we think about Creighton, baylor Shineman, the transfer, big-time rebounder, three-point shot maker, but it's Ryan Kalkbrenner and his defense, the ability to get out on those ball screens, I think is going to be the difference. I got Creighton advancing in this game. And then Missouri, Arizona. This will be a wide-open game. You talk about Arizona. They play at warp speed, play post-to-post -post basketball. I'm not sure Missouri can deal with that. It will be a question. Who does Omar Ballo defend? Because Kobe Brown is at the five. They're going to put him, in ball, put him with the ball in the middle of the floor. That will be a concern, but I still think Arizona will handle it. If you want to pick a flyer, that's a flyer because the pressure of Missouri could bother those Arizona guards. But for now, we'll stick with those guys right there. And then we'll go over to the east right here. Purdue, Memphis. Kendrick Davis is a problem. He really is. This Purdue team, they're going to have to handle the pressure of this Memphis defense. Memphis gets up and underneath you. That means those guards on Purdue are going to have to handle the basketball, be strong with the ball, and not get pushed out. 
I'm not sure Memphis has enough besides that. I'm going to go with the fighting Zach Eadies right here. Duke, Tennessee, it's the Duke defense against the Tennessee defense. Duke, again, Filipowski, lively. You bring Derek Whitehead off the bench. Tyrese Proctor has improved each and every game. Roach, their experience in terms of Roach playing in big games. Tennessee has really struggled in the NCAA tournament without Sakai Ziegler. I got Duke advancing. Kentucky, Kansas State. All right, I'm going to go a little upset right here. I think Kentucky right now, obviously with Oscar Sheeby, but Cason Wallace, he's going to have to handle the ball and deal with the pressure of Kansas State. Will they have a matchup with Keontae Johnson? I'll tell you who the matchup with Keontae Johnson is. Is Jacob Toppin. I got Kentucky advancing to the Sweet 16. All of a sudden, John Calipari can coach again. He couldn't coach for a while. Now he can coach again. And then Michigan State Marquette. I love Sparty. Absolutely love Sparty. But I'll tell you what, this Marquette team, they've got the most skilled, the most skilled front court players in college basketball. They disrupt you defensively. They play with great spacing offensively. They can really pass and shoot the basketball. I've got a little upset right there. Uh, excuse me, not an upset, but uh, I have Marquette winning that game. Let's go to the Midwest here on the other side here. Go to the other side. You got Houston and Iowa. Now, I'm picking this, expecting for Marcus Sasser to play. Marcus Sasser, Traymon Mark, and Jamal Shedd, they remind me of the backcourt of Baylor that won a national championship. Elite defensive team, elite offensive rebounding team. The missed shot sometimes is their best offense. I've got Houston winning that game. Miami, Indiana, again, because North Chad Amir, we don't know if he's going to be 100%. Trace Jackson Davis, Jalen hood Shafino. This, this is a little bit of a flyer for me. The only reason it is, obviously not in the seating, is that Indiana has had a hard time all season long validating their wins. I'm going to go with another little upset right here. I've got Pittsburgh and Xavier. This is kind of a conspiracy game. Sean Miller, he threw that pass to Jerome Lane, send it home, Jerome. And that's obviously he's playing against his alma mater. Without Zach Freeman, I'm not sure they're the same team. Pittsburgh, not a great defensive team, but they are hard to play against. And this is a Xavier team that's not as good as, say, Sean Miller's old Xavier teams on the defensive end. And then I'm going to go with Texas. And Texas, you look at Texas, they, they won the Big 12 Conference Tournament without, without Timmy Allen. They're going to get Timmy Allen back. They got Dylan Mitchell. They got an elite backcourt. Marcus Carr is a really good closer. And then we'll go here in the bottom of the West right here. Kansas and Arkansas. If Kevin McCullough is healthy, so that's my big if. I'm going to say he's healthy, back spasms, he, he clears and he plays. He makes such a difference in this team because Jalen Wilson, we know what he does. We know what Grady Dick was, that does, but we don't know. We know what Dewan Harris does, but you need Kevin McCullough. He's kind of like a Swiss Army knife. He can define point guards to power forwards. He changes them defensively. Then UConn against VCU. I think they handle the VCU pressure. They pound them inside. Jordan Hawkins comes up, makes some big-time jumpers. That's good. TCU Gonzaga, I've got Gonzaga winning this game. Better defensively than people think. UCLA Northwestern, all right, I'm going to go with UCLA right here. As UCLA continues to move on, I'm hoping that Bona is healthy. Let's get right here to our Sweet 16. Alabama, Virginia, the best team in the country and the pace that they play with. Creighton, Arizona. I've got Creighton in the upset right here. I know that they played in the preseason, but you know what? That was a two-point game. Creighton's playing better. They weren't completely healthy. Here's my upset. I got Duke over Purdue. The Duke front court, obviously Derek Lively, his size and the primitive ability to pressure the basketball. I got Marquette sending Kentucky home. Just Tyler Cole controlling the tempo and the rhythm of the game. And then we go into the Midwest right here. All right? Excuse me. Houston, Indiana. I'm going to have Indiana advancing right here. Texas, I'm going to have Texas advancing. I think defensively, the ability to pressure the ball, get out to shooters. I've got UConn knocking out Kansas. All right, UConn, again, defensively, absolutely great balance. I worry about the depth of Kansas. And then I've got Gonzaga knocking off UCLA. Again, without Jalen Clark, that is an absolute problem. So now we get to our Elite Eight, Alabama and Creighton. Alabama is the most talented team in college basketball. They have two of everything. They're an elite offensive team. They can defend the rim. They can also run you off the three-point line. I've got Duke over Marquette, the way Duke's playing, 18-1 and one with their full lineup. That's just a little bit different. Then on the other side here, we've got 
We've got Indiana and Texas. Texas has the defensive versatility to deal with, obviously, Trace Jackson Davis. I've got them advancing right here. Then UConn and Gonzaga. I think that UConn has the size, the strength, the backcourt, has to play well, but they do a great job in defensive transition. I think they dominate the game on the glass. So now we, we get to our final four right here. You've got Texas and UConn. I think Texas, their athleticism, gets up and underneath UConn, pushes them out a step. So I have them right here. And now I have Alabama and Duke. I think Alabama is the most complete team in college basketball. I've got Alabama advancing. And then my champion from the SEC, Roll Tide. Nick Saban in attendance. They cut down the nets. And then they get ready for spring football.